Hey, what's up, y'all? And this is a light of moment. I'm Asenia. And I'm Deshaun. And it's a motivational podcast. Is it? It is. Oh, awesome. I love motivational podcasts. Stay tuned. Y'all check it out. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is the Light Bulb Moment Podcast, and I am Deshaun. And I'm Asania. Awesomeness. Awesome, yeah, Asania. Oh. Yeah. How's it going in Asania's world? Oh, man, when I can shake whatever this illness is, it'll be so much better. I'm just trying to shake whatever this is. That word illness sounds so bad. Okay, this... I don't know. I'm sick. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this virus. I don't know. Virus sound worse than illness. Illness. I'm ill. Right. Oh, shit. I guess. That's messed up, right? How would you phrase it then? Um, this little, I don't know. I don't this know. little bug. Okay. Bug. When I get over this bug that I got. Right. Illness. Illness. I thought I I don't know why I did that. I don't know why. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it happened. But yeah. It just did. Yeah. It's going down. I hope y'all feeling good this morning. I hope y'all feeling better than me. But, right. But I'm not claiming it, so I'm going to shake it sooner or later. I feel good, though. Well, at least one of us feel right. doing good. Yeah, that's what's up. I am in good spirits, usually. Uh, what's going on with you? I mean, I'm good, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it's nothing like extra or anything. I just, you know. I'm good. You're just good. Yeah, I'm just. Do you? What do you? What's your regimen when you wake up in the morning to make sure you stay in the mind frame and feeling good? Um, I pray every morning. Every morning. Mm-hmm. Every single morning. Do you have a time frame, or do you pray for this on the same stuff? Or uh, I usually pray around about the same stuff. It's usually the same things. I have this list that I read every morning. Um, so like a list of affirmations and positive words. Mm-hmm. Now that changes, yeah, that changes every day. Not every day, but it'll change with the season. Depends on what's happened in my life. Um, but yeah, then that's all. That's the only thing. Ain't no hardcore stuff, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sorry, y'all. It's a little inside joke. Right. Yeah, yeah. Had to be here to see it. But um, okay. Yeah, that's what's up. What's your morning regimen? I roll over and I grab my cell phone. And I oh yeah, I be doing that messages. too. Yeah, I do that too. And then I lay and play my cell phone after I check Star Wars. It's not. I'm not saying it's a good regimen, but this is Star my Wars. Regimen. That's like yeah, it's, it's an app on my phone. Oh, okay, cool. I'm app here. I roll and play Star Wars, and then I look, and I realize thirty minutes have passed probably, and then go to the bathroom. And then that's it. See, I, I never thought about like getting up and praying. That's not something that I did. But you know. know what? I be on my phone too, though. So mm-hmm. I want it to sound like I'm um, not. And I think that's such a bad thing that like your phone is the first thing you, we go to now. When we but I do try to spend as less time as possible on there. Because I know if I get on there, it'll, especially with me not having like a like a, a job, job, job yeah, it can turn into like... Oh, hours. Hours. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I try to get on there. YouTube is the one thing you don't want to go to the first thing you get up. Right. In your phone, man. You, the yeah. same thing Any with them apps. Yeah, <laughs> Facebook too, because, uh-huh. man, the feeds come in so fast, you look up 45 minutes of gone. Right. You got on something on Facebook, so. Exactly. Oh, trust me, I understand. Mm-hmm. But that makes sense. Maybe getting up and praying and reading my list. Is, see, that's what I'm trying to really get back into the group mm-hmm. of. I fell off. My wagon, mm-hmm. but um, getting up and knowing exactly what you're doing when you get up, right? Instead of just getting up and being like, uh, right, um, freestyle my day, right? Um, I've always prayed, but I just feel like I really need to because I need like some type of protection because I be driving Lyft and I, I do, <laughs> I be feeling like I need to pray. 
because I need some type of spiritual warfare to help I'm combat sorry. everything that's going to come into my car. I thought I'm you serious. were talking about like when a spiritual level was like, that's real spit though. I'm just did you used to do that when you wait the tables? I did, I did, but I wasn't as strict with it. Like if I didn't have time and I was running late, I would just, but now it's just because I can leave when I want to leave. I can like okay. make it in, but if I was late for work and I had to be somewhere, I would like, you know, just go. But yeah. Okay, I mean, I thought you like the sense where it's like I need protection against these crazy ass people that I'm come in contact with. Well, like, picking them up. Oh, uh, that too. That too. It'd be because, that, but that's not like the only thing I pray about. Like, all right, thank you so much. Let me just make sure my lip riders are okay today. Thanks, bye. I do pray about a plethora of things. You know what I'm saying? But um, <laughs> I definitely include that though. <laughs> okay, that's what's up. Yeah, at least you put that in. You know, you put that time and energy. Do you pray before you go to sleep? I don't, because I feel like I want to make sure I'm giving a good prayer, and I don't want to be tired praying. So I wish y'all could see my face right now, because I'm right. giving a real, yeah, I'm giving that WTF face. Yeah, because like I feel like. So you feel like if you don't do if you do a prayer when you're not 100 percent alert, yeah, it's not as it'll genuine. be a lazy prayer. You feel like it's a lazy prayer. Yeah. So, so you feel like you're not evoking the correct you get you need a good to. quality prayer. So you can say the right things, feel the right things. You don't want to be like rushing through your prayer. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. Yeah. I respect yeah. I kind of <laughs> fucked up all my prison. I'm kind of effed up all that one. Right. But okay. That's but that's just for me. I mean, I know what you're saying, right. though, because when, if you're not paying attention, you may not even make it through the whole prayer. Or you just may be thinking wrong, incorrect things, won't be focused. That's that's me. Now, I don't know. Other people may pray. You know, people do what they do, but I like to pray in the morning. That's real spirit. I like to pray in the morning. Okay. Yeah. So you pray once a day? Pretty much, yeah. I talk. But like one like You do the little bitty prayers? The little bitty what, what are those? When God blesses you for something or something like that, you be like, Thank you, God. Thank you for this. Do I do that? I do sometimes. I do. I do. And I won't be in it yeah. cynical because Carmichael showed they made fun of that. Cause, oh, did they really? Because he made he told his mom that um Muslims are way more devout than she was as a Christian and she was like, No, I'm, I'm devout, you know, I'm dedicated to my Lord. And he was like, well, Muslims pray five times a day, mm-hmm. daily. And she was like, five times? So he's like, well, I pray more than five times a day. And, and she was counting those little prayers? Little prayers. <laughs> I'm not mad at that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not mad at that at all. I mean, they count. You got it. They, they count? She said, they count. Yeah. You include the little bitty prayers. Um, I try to say my affirmations more than once a day. Well, you're supposed to. You're supposed to say it three times. You're supposed to say yeah. when you wake up midday when you're halfway through your day and at night time before you go to bed so you can go to sleep with that positive thought process. Right. I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. But I, I sound like I'm all organized and stuff, but... <laughs> oh, gosh. I am in my but, head. But at least you do it and you got something, to, you know, you got a foundation to start from. Right. Cool. Think of somebody like, for me, meditation is something that I'm trying to really get, like make a regimen, like make something that I do on a daily basis. And it's tough, especially depending on what kind of mind frame you're in. And I see meditation the same way you see prayer. I kind of feel like they're one in one, mm-hmm. you know? So the fact that you get up and do it and you try to stick with it, <coughs> excuse me, I commend you for that. Yeah. That's it's tough. It's real tough. Yeah. Kind of, oh. kind of parsh. Someone eat some of this ice. Let's go make so many nuts. I know, stuff. right? I mean, um, you gave a warning. Yeah, yeah. You have to use this ice ruffle. But um, what's our topic of the depression? Depression. <laughs> depression. I ain't got. I brought that one up. I chose that one. I kind of really want to just touch bases on this because I think it's a serious topic that we don't really have a lot of conversation about. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't want to say any particular ethnicity just in general you know, I think we should take it a lot more serious than what it is I think the biggest reason we don't take it serious because we don't know how to identify it you know you just want to think it's just somebody feeling down and sad or just having a rough time or whatever and then you know 
African Americans like to use the whole logic of we went through slavery and everything else, so it's a little bit of depression. But I think it's just an unhealthy psychological. I mean, I think it's a psychological imbalance. Mm. Um, what's the definition? Um, feeling of severe dejection. Dejection. I have to look up. What's the definition? (laughs) (laughs) Definition Y'all Google dejection when y'all look this up. Uh, My personal definition of um, depression is sadness and inability to take care of daily tasks and lack of enthusiasm and emotions in regards to daily activities and things that you used to like. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's interesting. So... I never really I can't really recognize depression and I think a lot of people have that same issue Mm -hmm. because I think in order to fix something you have to first recognize it I mean you You don't have to be able to identify it you have to identify it you have to identify it Um, and I know you are a lot more experienced with depression true so can you also point out when someone else is depressed um if I know the person. Okay. If I know the person. Or if I've had prolonged exposure to that individual so you can see the mood swings. Mm-hmm. Like an individual that I was very close to at one point in time, I watched her go from one extreme to the other extreme in the situation. And from watching her go to those two different extremes <clears throat> and then also watching her actions, you know, um, she was sleeping a lot. Mm-hmm lack of enthusiasm about getting anything done like little bitty stuff talking about taking a shower getting dressed getting out of the bed damn eating what you gonna eat today not even the big stuff paying bills bills that you were used to paying and you were paying on time things that you had a regiment or you were accustomed to doing you no longer have the energy or the enthusiasm to do Mm. Uh, talking to people having conversations anything uh, sexual activity so on and so forth. And it's more than just being tired. Yeah, it's more than just being tired because, you know, being tired, you know when you're tired. Your body's giving out. Your body's about to pass out. Is it like a spiritual tired? Um, I, think it's, I think it's more of a mental. A mental tired. Okay. When you're actually physically exhausted, your body's giving up on you. Right. Um, I think the exhaustion from depression is more like a, a, a mental state where you can't think straight. You can't right. develop a healthy thought process. You can't even formulate what you want to do next. Um, when you perform certain activities, there's just no drive. Mm. <clears throat> i give you an example. For myself personally, when I experienced it, um, something that I did all the time, which was indulging video games, I couldn't find the enthusiasm behind it. I couldn't find... The joy. The urge, yeah, the joy within playing them. The excitement and drilling within playing them. It was just like, this is... This is... Ugh. I can't even... It's not even like a bad taste though. I was upset. It's like was a blank. It was, just, it was just bland. Yeah. It's like eating some bland food. Right. You're just indifferent about it. You're not upset or pissed off that the food tastes bad, but it's like, okay, you don't even care. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Shrug. That's interesting. Hey. I think yeah, I think that's why that's one of the things because the the lack of enthusiasm or empathy that comes from people who um, experience depression, we just take that as them being nonchalant. Right, right. That's interesting. So nonchalant and depression are two different things. Yeah, man. Yeah, you because nonchalant, nonchalant is just, just when you just chill. Yeah, you just chill. Yeah. But depression, but someone who is nonchalant, it will be difficult to recognize the depression in them. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yep. That's what's up. Yep. Mm-hmm. But depression is more so, nonchalant is more so an attitude because a nonchalant person will still get up and do and stuff. do stuff, right. 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 Their personality is, is just, yeah. Depression is a feeling. It actually like, was yeah. physical and, and it affects what you're doing. Yeah, and then yeah. it has other symptoms, anxiety, um, I don't want to say paranoia, with sadness, anger, frustration, like just the emotions that, that stem from depression are way more intense. Because mm. <clears throat> I know somebody was going through it and their anxiety was leaving them in a state of paralysis. Mm. Physically? 
Mm-hmm. That's interesting. So depression can affect physical. That's where the sleeping comes in. Mm. That's interesting. I had a family. I'm gonna be real. I had a family member, and I know I don't put our business out there, but screw it. Two tears in the bucket. We all got issues. When I was young, and we used to stay by our house, she used to sleep all day. Like real life sleep. Like be in the room. Door closed in the bed. Never understood. I just figured like she was tired. Right. Because she didn't want to do stuff. All the time? It would it would happen in spurts. Mm. It would be like weekends or something like and that. And she would be really sleep, not just like in the bed, because I don't feel like messing with nobody, but like really like sleep. She would either be sleep, either sleep or in the bed. And her being in the bed would lead her to go back. So she would either watch something on TV that was holding her attention, and once that wore off, she would go to sleep. Mm. and then wake up and repeat that cycle and as I got older and started having conversations with my mom about our family members <clears throat> she broke it down to me and I started and I started learning symptoms of depression I was like yo this person's been going through it all that time mm. I never realized that that's what that was I just thought she you know she liked being in the bed she was lazy but it was really that mm. and then she also used to rope a toe smoke weed do you think there's a difference between being lazy and depressed. Yeah. Okay. Lazy is just when you don't feel like you know it. you don't you know what you need to do. You have the energy. You got everything in front of you. Just but is that not depression? Like I I don't agree with it because depression is you know what you want to do. And you actually have drive and you trying to do it. You want to accomplish it. You want to get this stuff done. Right. But you physically your mind won't allow you to get up and perform the task. Uh, and lazy is more so you choose not to you just choose not to you just like fuck it like I was supposed to wash clothes today but yeah <laughs> right you just want to wash clothes right where depression is like y'all I'm trying to get up and go wash these clothes I'm actually making the value and attempt to get out of my bed and go do this but my legs and my rest of my body is not responding and I, I have no energy to get up and move and when I try to do it I can't think straight or I get you almost feel sick or you just feel exhausted that's so interesting. Your whole body just has this feeling of numbness. Right, right, right. Mm. It's almost like an outer body experience of some sort. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe have I'm you ever had an outer body experience? No, have you? Is that I being high? Had. Oh. Nah, this is before I started smoking. Oh. I was a child. How did this happen, real quick? Astral plane. Oh, okay. You believe you know astral plane? Like another dimension? When your spiritual state leaves your physical. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I was very young. Mm-hmm. I made this real show very young, and I used to meditate before I really understood what meditation was, and before I had like a whole bunch of psychological stuff that would block my mind. You have to be very clear in thought mm-hmm. and at peace. And I, I used to just sit in the house and meditate, and I was laying on the sofa, and I remember this very clearly. <clears throat> I was laying on the sofa, and it felt like a dream. And I thought I saw myself laying on the sofa and I saw my mom's car pull up from the grocery store. So I knew she was coming home. I was like to get the groceries out the, out the bag. So I got in the mind frame to get ready to do that. And I guess I jumped back in my body. And this is the thing they say when you jump back in your body too fast, it can actually paralyze you. And I remember... The whole thing, I remember hearing my mom get out the car. I said, I remember walking to the car. She got to the door. She's knocking at the door because the groceries in her hand. But I can't pull myself up off the sofa to go answer the door. Mm-hmm. It took me at least about three or four minutes before I could get up off the sofa. But you know what? That's kind of like when... Real quick, because we kind of off topic. We know when you have a dream and you be trying to wake up and you can't wake up. Mm-hmm. Is that an out of body experience? You might have been having an out of body experience and, and perceived it as a dream. I have them all the time. Like you be trying to like move, and it's like you know you up, but it's like you can't. Yeah, yeah. And then when you get back and you know you're up, and you like you can't, you yeah. can't. Yeah, you, yeah. You probably don't realize it. you probably had an out of body experience more times than you realize, yeah. but you just knocked it as a crazy dream. Nothing that's just like depression. I think a lot of times people go through depression. Oh, nice way to segue. That was yeah. a nice segue. That was a dope <laughs> segue, baby. That was loud, baby. That was nice loud. little pass. Yeah, I like that. But I think people go through depression. And they don't realize they're going through depression. That's what they're going through. And I think also right. other people don't realize when someone else is going through depression. Like, 
a family member or a child, you may think your child is like, what's wrong with you? You having a rough day or having a rough right. time at school. Like, I don't know. He in his little mood. I don't care. Right. But he may be depressed. Yes. That's why I don't take young people's um, feelings and emotional like emotions me. lightly. Because, you know, adults like to write off the way younger people feel, teenagers, young adults, and so on and so forth, experience that feeling that they haven't had enough life experience. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. So you shouldn't be stressed about anything, but you never know what a person's situation is, and you should never take because that's what leads to suicides because you're neglecting them, and they and they probably made a uh, attempt to reach out for help, but because it was minimized because of their age or their situation, mm-hmm. and somebody didn't take it serious. They just bypassed them, and then by the time they got to the point where you realize something's wrong, it was too late. They had already taken their own lives. Like I take that stuff very mm-hmm. seriously. I haven't mm-hmm. been close to anybody who's experienced, I mean, who's, who's, who's committed suicide, but just through knowing people and just losing people through death mm-hmm. and just natural causes. Like that's just rough in general on the on the on the on the other individual. I have a friend who who. Family member took their lives. Uh, parent, one of their parents took their life in. Mm. Ooh, that's that's a hard one. Yeah, because mm. you left with so many un, 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 unanswered questions. I wish it was impossible to commit suicide. Yeah, that's a tough one. All right, I'll come back on that one. <laughs> that's a tough one. I mean. But my biggest thing is like, what are the triggers, man? I, you know, it's so many different variations of it. it's clinical, it's postpartum. And you're talking about depression. Of depression, right? It's so um, many different variations and so many different triggers. You know, my biggest thing is I want to start learning the science so I can learn how to, and I also want to learn how to help people who are going through it, not just for myself. You know, I I, I battle with it off and on. It hits how me. do you get through it? I used to just sedate. To be very honest with you, I used to smoke very heavily, mm-hmm. and um, escape forms of my, my video games with my phone like escapism. Mm-hmm. So I would ignore it. So, what advice would you give someone who's listening right now who has depression? What should they do to get through what they're going through? I would say reach out to a prof- trained professional. Okay. I wouldn't reach out to a family member or a friend going through depression. Because they don't have the answers and they're not trained for it. Because they can't help you get to the root of it. Mm. They can probably give you some emotion. I mean, give you some uh, TLC. That would be like putting a Band-Aid. Yeah, it's a Band-Aid on it. Real quick. That's it. Because once, cause once that goes away, for instance, like, if somebody's depressed and you dating them and they're not happy with themselves, but they feel good with you when they meet you, that's only going to last for a little while. And then eventually you no longer give it's you like a drug. Give them that high it's like a drug. You don't give them that high anymore. So they need they need somebody else that can increase that buzz or increase that high. Right. So you can move on to another drug or another individual. Right. Hmm, interesting. As far as recognizing it, like how would you recognize depression? I still say mood swings. Mood swings. A person a person's a person's That's not bipolar? No. I feel bi- bipolar is something completely different. Bipolar is when you really, really up and you like, woo, you know, really hyping and you down and you either pissed off all the time or you like E or, I, I, you know, really, 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 really sad. Mm-hmm. You know, you want it to the extremes. I think, um, for instance, I wonder if Robin Williams was bipolar. Mm-hmm. I felt his energy. He always had a certain sadness about him regardless of what he did. I think he got joy from bringing other people happiness through comedy and so on and so forth. Right. But I think there was still an unhappiness deep down inside. I saw it in the movie Toys. He's had a couple of different movies that he did, and I could always see this in him. It was just something in his eye. But yeah, it was more than just acting. It was, it was something. Just acting. It was something deeper down right. in him. Um, <clears throat> um, if it's somebody close to you, you know, and you would recommend that if you had a friend or family member who was depressed, was going through it, try to get them to go to therapy as well. No, nah, that's the thing. You can't get them to go to therapy. A person who's going through depression, okay. I recommend them to go find their own therapist. A person who's trying to help somebody, a friend of mine sent me a list of things uh, that might help you out when recognizing somebody who's going through depression. 
and it was like stuff like um, take him out for a walk, giving me exercise, food, eating. Here we go. I actually found it. Uh, actually, I'll read these out. Ooh, big blank, big pause. Oh, yeah. Should I talk while you're... Uh, that's up to you. Oh, okay. Well, um, I don't know. Depression. I feel like no one in my family has ever said anything about depression. Nobody talks about it. Well, someone... I've had a couple of people, mostly just one person, who talked to me about depression. But I have a huge family, and I feel like it's probably more than one person who's depressed. But, um... Is depression something you can hide? Maybe downplay. So I guess yeah, if you can hide it, you can right. down, if you downplay, you can hide it. Right. That big big pause again. But and yeah. it comes in severities, right? Like it can it, be. It like, comes in. It comes. Yeah, it comes in. Yeah, it has different levels to it. Yeah. Uh, I think I watched this one person transition from being in the bed. And not want to get up and go eat. Like they would start their day at like one, two o'clock in the evening. That's because they couldn't sleep at night. Because they couldn't sleep at night. They would sit up with the anxiety all night, and then they would spend all day in bed just because it wasn't that they were tired. They hadn't done anything to make them tired. They hadn't been to work. You hadn't been running. You hadn't done anything. You spent the day before in bed, and then you slept all day, and then you got up late in the evening, did a couple of things, and then the next morning. The next day, you did the exact same thing. You spent all day in bed. Um, it says, chances are their room is a disaster and they have lack of motivation to do anything about it. So, cleanliness, physical appearance, uh, help them tidy up. And I've learned that. That's why cleanliness is very important. So, uncleanliness can lead to depression? It could be a sign. Ooh, that's, that's interesting. It can be a sign. Mm. Um, it says do their laundry. Even small chores seem to be seem to pile up <clears throat> when a person is is depressed and not having clean clothes won't make them feel any better. So doing stuff like just helping groom, cleaned up, mm. clean up the apartment, cooking, trying to cook healthy meals, um, try to convince them to go for short walks. Basically, you want to get them moving. Yeah. Yep. There's a good chance they'll feel good. It's that uh, walking releases certain endorphins mm. when you exercise. Um, if you can't get them outside, at least open a window for fresh air and let some sunshine in because actually sunshine gives you a certain vitamin D, D, right? D that it actually helps with the immune system and also... All kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, yep, prepare a healthy meal with some fresh fruit. I Meaning, depressed people fall into bad eating habits. My, my father's recommendation is not to eat any sugar when you're feeling like you're down or you feel sad. Okay. Um, but you have to also watch natural sugar, too. Is that right? Because fruit ain't nothing but sugar. So I guess you have to be yeah, like. But yeah. Still, it's not like that processed stuff. Right. So I guess like processed sugar. Candy. Right. Stuff like that. M&M's and stuff. Uh, dang, I never thought about that. Yeah, because diabetics, they have to watch, like, all sugar. Not just, like, aromatherapy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Taking warm baths, aromatherapy. Uh, write them a letter or a card to read for when they are feeling really bad. Make them a recovery playlist with some of their favorite songs and anything uplifting. Cause that's crazy when people depressed. You go listen to the worst music that you should listen to. Mm-hmm. Depressed. You gonna listen to something that's just gonna bring you down. Even God damn, Marilyn Manson. <laughs> um, um, so it sounds like when you activate other senses, it'll do something to your mind. Is that what it is? Like yep. smell, aroma, um, music. Of course, you know, music triggers something in you. Usually, the right song does. Yeah, music, laughter, anything that's going, anything that's going. Um, Make them feel good. Right. Because you know what they say, laughter is one of the best healers. Right, 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 right. So, you know, 
And the 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 biggest quote that was given to me is, man, it always gets better. Mm. You know, my mom and I used to discuss because we knew I, I had family members who suffered from depression. Is that our affirmation that always gets better? I feel like it can be. Mm-hmm. Life always gets better. You know, which which makes sense because it's crazy how like when we're going through the storm, we get frustrated and we get. You know, life starts taking a toll mm-hmm. and we get discouraged and aggravated. And then and once it's all said and done, you look back on it and you're like, yo, it wasn't that bad. Right. Right. It wasn't that bad. And you learn something from it. Right. But so when you in the storm, maybe like. When you storm, you're right. Right. Like, whoa. So, but my biggest thing is, man, if, you, if, if, if you're feeling bouts of sadness where you feel like you don't want to do anything you don't want to be bothered you don't want to like, like is that just up, a regular sadness you know, like an unmotivational like I'm, giving, yeah, I'm giving up right. like I don't want to do jack I'm tired of all this around me I sleep in the bed all day I don't want to talk to anybody I don't want to interact with anything now um, what about people who work a lot and are depressed can you get depressed and be a workaholic at the same time that's tough mm. I don't know. I think we should find somebody who's a special therapist. At. I, I like think a, this is something and a that symptom be somebody who just like works all the time. Probably, mm, it could be right. to ignore it, yeah. to cope with it. It's a coping mechanism. I feel like we all have our own personal coping mechanisms. Right. It should be a two part conversation. We should come back with somebody who's special. Yeah, I know, depression. right? We need a therapist. Yeah, we need a therapist in here to help us discuss this. But I do believe this. Or is a psych major going <laughs> <Yeah, right. laughs> on? Right. I'm just saying, you ain't got to be all that. <laughs> Nobody about to pay these <laughs> degrees and stuff. You know they cost. <laughs> I'm just saying, nobody got time. <sighs> but I do think, but the reason I want to discuss this, because this is a serious topic, and with the stuff that's going on around us mm-hmm. that we're being bombarded with, which is another conversation that we're having in the near future, mm-hmm. how we've been bombarded with so much information. Um, that is almost like a form of brain control and so much negative information that affects our thought process. I think the state of depression and, and uh, psychological issues are going to increase, especially when you start looking at, um, and especially as the economy, if the economy doesn't get better, if wages don't start getting up, it's going to only get more severe. Severe, Because when people money ain't right, live in a situation, they can't feed their families and do stuff like that. They start getting stressed out. And then it starts triggering shit like this. Yeah. It but triggers a lot of stuff. It triggers too. a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Not just depression. Not just depression. It's just yeah. uh, mental, mental health issues mm-hmm. gen- yeah. in general. And people yeah. start flipping out and doing crazy stuff. And with our current state, and just, man, like I said, that's a whole other conversation we yeah. have. Conditions triggering yeah. stuff. Okay. Conditions. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your light bulb moment? I don't really have one. I'm gonna be hundred percent. My light bulb moment is trying to is acknowledging and accepting acknowledging the signs of depression and accepting it when you have it and then trying to do something about it. Mm, that's a good one. Um, I would say my light bulb moment is I don't want to say the same thing you just said but it could be the same thing that I just said though I know but I want my own oh it's okay (laughs) my light bulb moment is um come on (laughs) yeah, I know, right? You keep leaving them blank pauses. I I gotta, we got to fill it in because I don't feel like editing that out. I know. Well, I mean, blank pauses are good. They help you to um, reflect and to have some time to breathe and stuff to catch up. But my light bulb moment is recognizing depression. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, you went deep into that too. Right. All them pauses. And all them pauses. <laughs> right. I'm going to start singing the Mario Brothers song every time we get a big um, pause blank. Because sometimes you can be depressed and you don't know you're depressed. Yeah. So... I denied it for a minute right. when I was going through it. I denied it for a hot minute. But you know what? Sometimes it's the last thing you're thinking about is depression. I feel. I feel like it has such a negative stigmatism on it, that, and I hope that's the correct word. It's almost like a negative stigma. I never thought I would have cancer. But I don't have cancer, but you know, it's the last thing you're thinking about. So do you feel like... But it can happen, though. It can happen. So do you think that along with the regular checkup to the doctor, you should take a regular... Psych evaluation? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I told we had this once before, I really think you should get a therapist to 
for yourself. Right. A person, a person to go talk to, who has a non-biased opinion about you and your. And who's life. an expert in their field? An expert in their right. field. Not just like. Yeah, I won't come talk. Your neighbor. To you. yeah. yeah. No, you should go there because that's the biggest problem. We standing around here passing on our negative energy on to the like back and forth to each other through family. Like, no, go talk to this person. Mm, that's what's up. Go talk to them. Plus, everybody don't need to know your business. I know that's right. That's a that's another topic too. Yeah, spit it to that one person, that therapist, right? And call it a day. So, you got any other things you want to say before we get out of here? Yeah, we need to make this a two-part special. We need to go find somebody's psych major and sit down and talk to them. Right. I got some people in mind, too. Yo, Sandy, we're going to make this happen. Besides that, man, love yourself, man. And and learn to be happy and understand that, you know... You are worth it. You are worth it. And a lot of the psychological stuff you're not exempt from and people around you aren't exempt from. So if somebody's reaching out to you for help or helping hand, you know, don't ignore them. Try to help them find some. Somebody who can help. That's what's up. The system. Well, with that being said, <laughs> yeah, we had to liven it up because yeah. that was a serious conversation. So that I just threw that in. Made me my heart. Yeah, yeah, I just seen it. Y'all. You look like a pug. Right. The way your eyes is going to be. By the dump. But yo, peace out. I'm Asenia. And I'm Deshaun. Follow us on all different. Oh yeah, LBM, platforms, LBM podcast. On I thought you yeah. was gonna do it, but I'm gonna do it. Well, the the white lady said we shouldn't do it all the time at the little convention, but um, we can still do it. So LBM, if it was a black lady, would you have listened to? It? Hell no, I'm joking. I'm joking, <laughs> joking, jokes. Um, LBM podcast at LBM podcast on everything, True. and at Deshaun Ryan and at Awesome Nia. Awesome Nia one seven. D e s h a u n d u r o n. Y'all be good. Peace out. Bye.